Hello! I'm hoping that the audio works. I'm guessing it does. I have like three pages full of notes. I've always kept personal things personal. I've never put them out there on the internet. One, because I am I wear my heart on my sleeve, so I know if someone was to say something hurtful, it would more than likely damage me. Um, and two, there's just a time and a place, and I think until you're ready to put it out there, then you shouldn't. So anyway, I'm going to be opening up to you, and I'm going to tell you all about my story in hopes that it will just help one more person or more people to kind of head in the right direction when they want to get these things done because everybody knows we've heard of like botched stories and we've heard of disaster stories and it is really frightening like I won't lie it is really scary but I'm here to help you <laughs> so I put on my Instagram a story the other day about um asking me questions and someone asked me if I've ever had a nose job and I just said yes and a lot of you were actually really shocked and didn't realise that I had a nose job one because you said it looked really natural and you wouldn't have thought it was like a surgical nose and two I think it's just because I've never really spoken about it I don't like ever lie about it if someone is to ask me even in person I'll always tell them I'm like I'm proud that I went and did it. I've got notes here and I'm going to be reading them just so I don't miss anything out because I'm the worst person at explaining things. So why did I want rhinoplasty? Um, to be honest, I had no confidence with my nose. Um, I would always contour it or try to do my best. I wasn't very good at contouring back then, so it would always look worse. I always used to get picked on at school for having a big nose. I was known as the girl with the big nose. Big nose, big bum, that was like the thing. Um, it was always on like, the gossip forums. And then I was always called horrible names that I will never repeat on here because they're very racist. Um, and that was because of the size of my nose. Or I'd get a compliment that says, oh, you're a pretty girl, but you're Greek, right? And I'll be like, yeah, why? And they're like, oh, the schnozzle. And it's just things like that. It's just like, really? Like, did you have to say that? If someone, like, say if I was in a club and someone took, like, a photo of me from the side profile, I would hunt that bitch down. And I will <laughs> snatch her hair and make her delete that photo. Like, I was that self-conscious about my side profile. Um that I just really wanted to get it done. All my friends, all my family were like, do you really, I mean, my family kind of knew how much I really wanted it done, so they were on my side, but loads of people were like, you don't need it done, like, your nose is fine, like, stop worrying, and da, da, da. and it's just like, that's cool for you to say, but unless you're me, you don't know how I feel. The hardest bit about this whole thing was finding a surgeon. I have done research for years before I actually decided. I once nearly flew all the way to Chicago and all the way back in the same day to have surgery. I found Lucien Eon on Real Self. You can um, look at reviews on there, you can see photos. I've got a thing on there as well. I can see if I can find it. I don't know whether it's deleted because it's been four years since I actually signed on. But if I find it, I'll link it down below. So he is, I think, mainly a vision surgeon. So he fixes botched up noses. He does a lot of rib, rib graft, ear graft to make the nose um, built, bit up, built up more. That's his main profession I guess or job that he does so I feel like a normal nose job would be like a walk in the park for him because he doesn't have to open anywhere else so yeah that was one of the reasons that I did really want to go to him as well because when you see some before and after it's like he is he has like magic fingers. Lucien Eon is the first surgeon that I actually went to see for a consultation and I'm really lucky that he was the first and last. I, I really really think you should do your research and if you're not 100% sure on that person do not do it like really do not do it your gut knows so listen to it so basically I'll tell you how the whole procedure kind of goes so I rang up and I paid for the consultation I paid this was three years ago mine so I don't know if prices have changed I paid 250 pound for the initial was it 250 or 150 I think it was 250 pound no it was 150 pound for the initial consultation I it was like maybe two, three months for me to wait for the consultation. Right away, I thought he was a really lovely guy. I knew that I really liked him. He was a bit quiet, not chatty. I know some surgeons can like try and oversell themselves and they talk very highly of themselves, whereas he was pretty quiet. He was showing me his work. He was um, saying what he would like to do with my nose. And then once we discussed that, he then took me to the side and he has like a little photo area and he took a front profile view, um, a front, a front photo profile views from each side and then it's so clever how he does this he puts them onto a computer 
And then what he does is he measures your actual nose, like the size of it, and then on the computer, he measures it to make it like bigger, so the proportions are exactly the same, so basically it's like sticking your face now onto the computer screen. So then when he makes the changes, what he does is he overlaps the photos so he can see and measure each part of the nose to know how much he needs to take off. So when he's in surgery, he can like draw on and make sure that he just takes off the amount that we've like agreed. So I thought that was super clever and I've never ever seen anyone do that before um, on anything or anyone ever speak about doing that. So that was really clever and I was really um, impressed with that. He basically was like, this is what I can do for you. I'm, I can't guarantee that it's going to be like exactly the same, but near enough, like it will be pretty much the same. Um, he never was 100% certain on things, which I felt if you're 100% certain on something, they could potentially go wrong, then you're lying, do you know what I mean? So that's how I felt with him. Um, obviously he wasn't doing that, he was just saying like, you know, I can't guarantee that it's gonna be exactly like that, but I will do my best to make it look exactly like that. So it's like, you know, get me? I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so we, I was in there for like a good half an hour, I wanna say, and then straight away I came out of that appointment and they put me into the office and they were like, do you want to book, um, Point, like your surgery appointment or do you want to book for another consultation I booked my surgery then and then I had to pay a 500 pound deposit and it was like a, th a three six I think it was a I'm June, July, August, September, October, November, five month wait I think his waiting list is now nearly up to a year like I feel like he's gotten so busy that even now um, when I used to ring up for appointments it used to take ages just to get in to see him just for like a little follow up. By the way, the consultation and the um, price of the nose job includes all aftercare as well. So I went to see him again for a second consultation the day before my surgery. And then um, just to like make sure that I was 100% sure on what I wanted. And then all the aftercare, so you see him like, I'll speak about it more, but you see him after. And that's all included in like the first initial price and like the price of the surgery and stuff. So don't worry about extra costs of that. It's quite like a hefty procedure. like money wise and surgery wise so basically when I came away from booking the surgery we had three different looks of noses that I kind of like not looks but like well yeah kind of um basically how much we were taking off and the shape was different and I will have to say like I went from loving one photo one moment to hating it to then liking it so I completely did a u-turn what I really loved in that consultation I ended up hating and what I hated in that consultation I ended up choosing and loving so I basically had them on my computer screen and I would sit really far away and I just like all of a sudden look and see which one was like the most appealing to me every time I'd walk past I'd just be like, okay, look, and then see which one catches my eye first and which one I preferred. So yeah, I would say do that. Also get opinions. I got opinion of my family members. They all said they loved that one at first, and I was like, oh no. But when I looked at it more, I was like, actually, yeah, I can see what they're saying. I just wanted a nose that was like more feminine, more petite, and just looked, I don't know, I just wanted to like have the nose I wanted to be born with, if that makes sense. I didn't want anything too small. I wanted something that suited my face shape and that is what Lucian does. He like looks at the dimensions of your face and he makes it to suit your face. He's very clever. Honestly, he's really, really clever and it was worth every penny, apart from the pain. <laughs> now, cost of things. I wasn't gonna tell you this, but I thought, oh, whatever, you literally just bring up and find out, so I may as well just tell you. So in total, it cost me 8,000 pounds, which I know is a joke. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm paying 8K now, but I'm paying that for the rest of my life, as in like, if I was to spread it out, it'd be so worth it. And to be fair, I saved up for two years and I did nothing. I didn't go out, I didn't shop, I didn't go out for food. I literally just worked my ass off. I was working three jobs. Like, I just knew I wanted it done and I just wanted the money. <laughs> so I just made sure I did that. Honestly, I literally didn't see sunlight. Uh, I'm not even joking. And you don't pay it all at once. So like I said, you pay for the £500 deposit. And then a month before your surgery date, you ring up and you pay the... Or did I do transfer? No, I think I rang up and you and I paid the 5k, which is for him, so he was five and a half K, and then the rest, which is two and a half K, is for the hospital and for the anaesthetist. 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 Can never say it. Um anaesthetist, anaesthetist whatever, whatever. The man that puts you to sleep. And you pay that on the day of surgery. So you get to the hospital and you pay them the 2k, and then I paid 500 pounds to the anaesthetist and I gave him you can either give him a check, I think, or a cash. That was that's how you pay, and that's the instalments and stuff. Once it was all booked in, I have to say I was like doing my research 
a lot. I was messaging people that had their noses done by him. I was looking at reviews. I was like shitting myself, but also really excited because it's very scary, but it's exciting at the same time. Before your procedure, so like a month before your procedure, you're supposed to take Arnica. Oh no, two weeks before your procedure. I can't remember. I literally was so long ago, I can't remember. But they make you take Arnica tablets, which helps with bruising. I think that was a week before. Yeah, they make you do that. I came off the pill a month before my surgery. They make you do that because you're not supposed to be on the pill. You're not allowed to drink alcohol for a week. Was it a week or two weeks? I can't really remember. But they didn't let me drink alcohol and you're not allowed to have like garlic or aspirin or anything that thins the blood for surgery, which makes sense. Okay, and then I'll tell you the one thing to do, which helped me a lot in the days of swelling, is to take the most hideous, horrendous, before photos of your nose ever. I mean like, get the angles that are like right in here, get them, because they help, because I just thought, if he fucks it up, because you know, you hear botched stories, not him, but like, you know, other people, but if he fucks it up, at least it will look better than what it used to. That was my that was my thinking pattern. And to be fair, when it was swollen, that did help. That really did help. So day before surgery, I travelled up to London with my mum. I went in to see him for the last, like consultation. You don't have to. Like I was pretty certain on what I wanted, but I just wanted to see him again. I think he just like calmed me down. He's so calm. He's so caring as well. Like he just calmed me down and was just like. I was getting myself in a bit of a tears and he was like, chill, like, it's totally fine. He does it, as a, do you know what I mean? He does it every day, like, well, he doesn't actually, but he, do you know what I mean? Like, he does it all the time, so he was just chilling me out. We were going over everything. Um, he didn't tell me exactly what he was going to do with my nose. All I knew was it was an open rhinoplasty. That's all I knew that I had, and I will go into the after about when he told me what he actually did to my nose, which makes a lot of sense. Um... So yeah, I went in to see him then. Me and my mum stayed in a hotel in London, because he is based, I didn't tell you that, but he is based in London. My mum and I stayed in London the night. I was the last surgery of the day, which to be honest, I wish now that I was the first, just because um, he ran over a little bit with surgeries, because he always says he does um, run over a little bit because he's a bit of a perfectionist and he'd rather do a really good job on someone's nose rather than rush and it not be perfect. Then I went into the hospital around, I want to say like lunchtime-ish, and I wasn't allowed to eat or drink anymore um, when I got there. They did all my like weight, they put me in the gown, they gave me my stockings. I was like waiting and waiting and waiting. I kept winding myself up. Like I ended up crying pretty much the whole day because I was absolutely terrified. So then when you're in the room, the anaesthetist will come in and tell you everything that he's going to do. He'll just say hello. So you just like know his face when you see him in the theatre. So it's not so scary. And then also Lucian will come in about half an hour before your um, surgery. Just make sure you're absolutely okay and you're 100% ready to go with the look that you've decided to go for. Um, and if you're nervous, he'll just calm you down and just be like, I'll see you down there. And then once that's done, what, the ha what happens is the nurse comes to get you. They take you in a lift. I went, I don't know if this is the same hospital, but if it is, they took me in the lift, they took me downstairs, I went into the room which is to the side of the theatre, you can see the theatre, but I just tried not to look in there because I knew that I'd panic, crying the whole time, literally couldn't breathe, like, I was so scared, sat me on a bed, lay, lay me down, and the nurse was talking to me, the anesthetist came in, um, he started fiddling with my cannula, didn't really think anything, I just looked up and they were talking to me, and then I go, oh my god, I feel drunk, like, I just went really dizzy, and I felt very drunk, and she was like, that's okay, we'll see you very soon, and I went completely out of it, didn't feel a thing, everyone, like, you hear horror stories, like, didn't wake up through surgery, nothing like that, and, like, was a breeze in the park, had a really nice sleep, I think it took three, two and a half hours to three hours, I think, in total, it was quite a long while, I know I came around at, like, 10 p.m., um, which is quite late, so, yeah, I woke up a little bit groggy. I was in a little bit of pain, not gonna lie. Um, they just gave me some more morphine and then I was high as a kite and I was absolutely out of my face. And they made me like walk to my bed and I literally like stumbled. I mean, obviously they helped me, but I literally stumbled to my bed because I was still out of my face. My mum was there and I was like taking photos of my nose, like, how does it look? Um, obviously you've got like a plaster cast on your nose. Um, but I was ringing, I can't remember any of this, but I was ringing everyone going, I did it, oh my god, I did it, it looks amazing. Da, 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 da. And in the morning I was totally fine, I could still breathe out of my nose. I had like splints up my nose um, as well as like a cast, but it was totally fine. I could breathe out my nose, there was like a bit of blood, it wasn't anything too bad. Um, 
But yeah, I was like loving life that day. I thought this is going to be a ride in the park. And then I had my eggs benedict that they give you in the morning. Um, it was really good food. I'd go back there, like just to stay there. It was like a hotel. Honestly, it was really good. I know it was hospital, but it was really good food. And then the next day, I was still feeling okay. Like I felt a bit um, groggy. The, the nose started to bleed a little bit more. I started to get a little bit more bunged up. Couldn't really breathe that well. Um, but that was the second day. And then the third and fourth and fifth day were by far the worst days for me. I, my face was swollen, my whole face was swollen. So my eyes were swollen here, like real bad. I couldn't see a thing, like I was so swollen. So that was day three. By day five, the swelling went from up here down to my cheeks. I honestly looked from the chipmunks, like I looked awful like where was the jawline like no one could contour into that honestly it was horrendous and that took forever to go down like it took about another week for it to go down from my jaw i looked awful i just felt groggy you can't sleep like you have to sleep sat up and you have to sleep with one of those like you know those airplane pillows that you can buy um you have to have one of those so you don't roll over and like hit your nose so i slept on the sofa with my legs up um every night and i slept on one of those things for about i think it was like a week and then you could sleep in your bed but then you have to still wear the pillow i wore the pillow for another two weeks because if you roll on your nose trust me you will wake up in absolute agony like the pain goes straight through you it's so sensitive you have to take quite i'll say you have to take quite a long medication after the surgery so i had to i couldn't inject myself i had to get my nan to inject me because she was a nurse so you have to inject yourself once a day or was it once a day or twice a day no once a day with blood thinners but then you also had to take tablets to clot your blood as well which I was like a bit confused as to why you have to take blood thinners and then why I have to take clotting agents but I guess it must balance your blood so it's like the perfect neutral blood consistency so you can't get clots and you can't bleed so you can't hemorrhage if that makes sense so I think that's the reason they do that I was taking Arnica tablets to help my bruising they gave me I think it's vitamin D cream or something to go around my eyes to help with the bruising they gave me something else like more bandages I went back to his offices where he does the consultation. Um, they have a nurse in a room. So I met this nurse who's so lovely. And she was like, now, I do have to tell you that your nose is going to be very, very swollen. And I was like, yeah, right, you know. I know it's swollen, but like, how swollen can it be? Honestly, my nose was like three times the width that it was before. And I was like, I, I remember looking into the mirror and thinking, oh my God, what have I done? I paid 8K for this. I literally remember thinking that and I shat myself and the lady was like trying to comment on she's like everyone's like this okay they don't call it the Miss Piggy month for nothing so like 100% you will look like a pig for the first month and like please just don't be alarmed like it's just one of those procedures where it just takes time like you just need to trust the process and you just need to trust him also don't forget in the recovery side of things like I know you've paid for surgery but you've basically professionally paid someone to hit you in the face with a hammer so like don't forget that you will feel like you've been run over by a lorry. So I've had this concept that like, oh, I pay for it. I'm going to get morphine. I'm going to like be fine. Like make sure you take a couple of weeks off work, 100%. Like just don't do it. You won't feel like going to work, honestly. I took two weeks off when I needed a month off. Yeah, I was hating my life. Just make sure you've got loads of things to do. I did like some painting by numbers. I did some colouring in. I watched loads of movies. Just make sure you're stacked full of things. Eat soup, I felt like, it, like hard food hurt my nose a little bit sometimes. So yeah, eat soup, just like eat soft things that you do when you're like poorly. And you'll go back up to London and see Lucian after three weeks. So it's been like a month since surgery. He'll have a look at your nose and he'll make sure that everything's healing quite nicely. I would say give it a good six months. Go through a love-hate relationship with it. So like one minute I loved it and then I hated it and then I loved it and then I hated it. Like you wake up every morning and it's swollen AF. So don't look at your nose in the morning. And then you go to sleep with it looking paying and you're like perfect I'm about to go to bed now if you go on any flights you land and your nose is swollen um sleeping again it's swollen like for a whole year it's a bit temperamental if it's hot it's swollen I would suggest doing it in the winter which I did because it being cool it's not going to be swollen so yeah I feel like 
that was the better option for me. This is exactly what he did to my nose. He took out some cartilage from my nostril, well, that bit that's in here, he said a little bit was sticking out, so he removed that and he put it in the end to give it a nice little tilt up so it wasn't so downward slopey. He then drilled this part of my nose just to get a little bit more of a straightness to it. He chipped away this bit of my nose either side just a little bit to make it a little bit more narrow. He then says at the end of like your nose you have like the bulbous bit which is the cartilage and I had a really bulbous nose so he said he took out the cartilage. He did the whole twisting under thing for me because I wanted a rounded tip. Um, so when he told me all of that I was like... No wonder I felt like I'd been run over. If I've missed out anything, which I probably have, please just comment down below and I'll keep an eye on them and I will get back to you on things. I think everyone's always wondering, was it worth it? 100% was worth it. If I had a nose like I did, I would still get it done now. So that is it for this video. I hope you did enjoy. Anyway, until next time, I love you guys and I'll see you very soon.